For our next unit of study in Algebra 2, we are going to be taking on radical functions and rational exponents. Now to begin this study, we're going to be looking at roots and radical expressions. So for starters, what is a root? Roots are the mathematical way of undoing powers. So if we start out with the power expression, such as 3 squared, or 3 cubed, 3 to the fourth, 3 to the fifth, these can be simplified as 9, 27, 81, and 243. But when we go to do anything in math, we have to have a way of undoing it. So roots are the way of undoing these exponents. We could say that 3 is the second root of 9. And similarly, we could say this about the others. So 3 is the third root of 9, or 27 rather. 3 is the fourth root of 81, and 3 is the fifth root of 243. So the roots simply tell us a way of undoing the exponents, and they're of matching sets. Now, in this section, we're going to learn the properties of roots and how to simplify the expressions that go with them. One property to bear in mind when we are doing roots is that there are different rules for odd or even roots. If a root is odd, there will be the situation where we have only one simplified version of each number. However, if a root is even, we have two possible solutions for each, one positive, one negative, and we look off of the positive version first. And that positive answer again is called the principal root. So as we go through, we're going to be looking at the principal root on most items, but bear in mind with odds that we there is only one answer. So this is the notation that is used when we're looking at roots. And the different parts will be as follows. This is called the radical sign. And it is used for all forms of roots. The number or expression that is underneath the radical sign is called the radicand. And it can have operations happening within it, addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and they are all underneath the radical sign. And the number that sits out on this little shelf is called the index. Now from a prime factored position, the index tells us how large the groups are that we are looking for. So if you are dealing with square roots, the index is a 2, and that is implied. So if you don't see a number on the index, it is implied to be a 2. But if it's anything else, it simply tells us what we're looking for. An example of this from math that you should know is that if we're looking at the square root of 9, now 9, again this has a square root on it, 9 is 3 times 3. So this square root tells us I'm looking for pairs of the same item. So here I have a pair of 3's, so that simplifies out, it almost acts as a filter, simplifies out as a single 3 coming out of there. And we'll work on this as we go through. So let's work on finding all real roots of the given numbers. So the third root of 27 thousandths, we're looking for a number when multiplied by itself 3 times equals 27 thousandths. Well that number 3 times 3 times 3 is 27, so if I go with a decimal, then each time I multiply, I'll have to move my answer over one decimal place, so this becomes my answer. The fourth root of 16, so I'm looking for some number when multiplied by itself 4 times would give me an answer of 16. I know for twice it is 4, 4 times 4. But how could I break this down to make it larger? Well, each of these 4's is two twos. So the fourth root 
of 16 is 2. The third root of a negative 729. Oh, sorry, we were finding all real roots. So that means this could be positive or negative because it is an even root number. Now, the third root of a negative 729. Again, I'm looking for a number when multiplied by itself three times will give me a negative 729. So each of these numbers has to be negative because three negatives multiplied together give a positive. And knowing my numbers, I have 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 81 times 9, well, 8 times 9 is 72. 1 times 9 is 9, so I'd get 729. So we have a negative 9 for our solution on this one. When you go to take a root of a fraction, the fourth root of 81 6 25ths is the fourth root of 81 divided by the fourth root of 625. Now what number multiplied by itself four times is 81? I know 9 times 9 will give me 81. So how do I break this down further? Well each of these 9's is two 3's so the fourth root of 81 is 3. Now 625 fourth root is going to be 5. 25 times 25 is 625 and each of these breaks down into two 5's. Now the third root of 8, 125ths. So I am looking for a number when multiplied by, sorry, third root of 8 divided by the third root of 125. Looking for a number when multiplied by itself three times gives me 8. And that number is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 is 8. And number multiplied by itself three times gives me 125. The answer is 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times another 5 is 125. And I'm looking for all real roots again, so this will be another plus or minus, plus or minus 2 fifths. And as you go through simplifying radicals, you're just going to need to learn to memorize or look for patterns in the number systems. And remember, when you take even roots, it's going to be a positive or negative. When you take odd roots, it's the same sign of whatever was inside the radicand. So there are some rules that go along with this and the nth root of nth powers comes into two situations as well. If we have the nth root of a to the n, the first situation is the value of a if n is an odd number because we'll be raising a positive or a negative to that power keep the sign, then take the root, the sign would retain anyway, or it has a value of the absolute value of a if n is even. So we have a negative raised to a power, it's going to get rid of that uh, sign, make it positive with multiplying an even number of negatives together. So when we take the root, it'd come out positive. If it was positive to begin with, we'd retain it, so we just say the absolute value. So let's take a look at a few of these. Let's start with the fifth root of 6 to the fifth. Since our n value is odd, we're simply going to go with the value of a inside, which is 6. The fourth root of negative 2 to the fourth, so our n value is even, we're going to take the absolute value of a, which is going to give us a value of 2. The ninth root of negative 7 to the ninth, again, n is odd, so we're going to keep the exact value of a, so our answer is negative 7. 6 squared, the square root of 6 squared, remember there's no index here, so it's automatically implied to be a 2. So our n is even, we're going to go to the absolute value of 6, which is 6. The seventh root of a negative 1 half to the seventh, since n is odd, 7, we're going to keep our number inside the radicand, so we have a negative 1 half. And the twelfth root of 6 over negative 5 to the twelfth, since n is even, we're looking at the absolute value of a, so we're going to end up with an answer of 6 fifths. Now, as we go through and work with these, 
it will become more apparent as to why these different things happen, but just learn these patterns at the beginning from the multiplication of positives or negatives. The last thing we need to talk about with roots and radical expressions is simplifying radical expressions. Now, if we have an expression that's all numbers, it simply follows the patterns we've discussed so far. If we have numbers and variables, we have a couple of things to keep in mind, again, in the interest of positive or even in odd indices. And what it comes down to is if n is even, sorry, that should be if n is even, and the resulting exponent is odd, a variable needs to be in absolute values. And you'll see what that means as we go through here. So let's start with the square root of 81x to the fourth. Now by our properties of square roots, we can break this up. This becomes the square root of 81 times the square root of x to the fourth. Remember this is a square root, so we're looking for groups of two of the same thing. Well, this is the square root of 9 squared times the square root of x squared squared. Now, breaking this down, square root of 9 squared is simply 9. The square root of x squared squared is going to give me x squared. Now, our index was even, it was a 2, and our resulting exponent on the variable is even, so we can go with 9x squared. See, what would happen if we were to substitute in a value for x, let's say x is a negative 2, negative 2 squared would become a positive 4, so we don't have to worry about it. But if we had an odd index, or an odd variable resulting, if we had x cubed, then we'd end up with a negative number, and we took the square root of a negative, which you cannot do. That's why we have to do the absolute value. Let's look at our next problem. The third root of a to the 12th, b to the 15th. So what this is, is we're looking at the third root of a to the 12th times the third root of b to the 15th. What this means is I have 12 a's multiplied by each other inside of that first radicand and I need groups of 3. Well, if I do that, then I can have my a, and I have 4 groups of 3 in there. For the third root of b to the 15th, how many groups of 3 are there in 15 b's? I'd end up with b to the 5th. Now our index was odd, so we don't have to worry about our rule in this case. Moving on to our last one, the fourth root of x to the 12th, y to the 16th, I have the fourth root of x to the twelfth times the fourth root of y to the sixteenth. Now when I look at x to the twelfth, how many groups of four are there? That is x, and there are three groups of four, times y to the sixteenth. How many groups of four are there? I end up with y to the fourth. Now we have the situation. n is even, we're looking at a fourth root, and our resulting exponent is odd on the x's. So I have to put the x inside of absolute value. So I get the absolute value of x raised to the third power times y to the fourth. So a lot of rules and situations to look at here, building on basic ideas that were learned in Algebra 1. So this becomes our springboard and launching point moving forward into radical functions and expressions.